So next, let's talk about the coordinate system. Now, for the most part, you're not going to need to alter the default coordinate system. What is the default coordinate system? It's a Cartesian system because it's dealing with you know, an x and a y axis, which is what the Cartesian system is made of. If we wanted to have a polar system, you could do a, coordinate, a polar coordinate system. And you've actually encountered that before uh, in the form of a pie chart, which operates on a polar coordinate system. So the common reasons that you might want to specify a coordinate system. One is if you want to flip the axis. So if you want your bar chart to go sideways, where the bars are horizontal rather than vertical, then you can take your existing bar chart where you've mapped region to the x-axis and then flip the coordinates by altering the coordinate system. Another reason that you might want to alter the coordinate system is if you want to zoom into a particular area of a plot. So for example, if you wanted to only look at those uh, points where the systolic blood pressure was between 80 and 100, you could choose to limit the coordinate system to a range of 80 to 100 for blood pressure and you could make similar restrictions for weight as well if you wanted to. So in effect, you'd be zooming into the plot. So these are the two common use cases where I will add a coordinate system into my ggplot. So to create this uh, plot on the top right, we start with patients. Just like we did before, we make a ggplot. And inside of the AES function, we map region to x and sex to fill. And then we add geom bar position equals dodge. And the only change is that we add this coord underscore flip, which tells us we want to want to flip the x and y coordinates. For a full listing of the possible things that you can do, take a look at the back of the RStudio data visualization cheat sheet, which covers the different options available for coordinate systems. If you wanted to zoom in, you would start with patients. Uh, specify the mappings, add geom point, and then you would add this line that says coord Cartesian y lim equals c 80 comma 100. And you might be wondering, well, wasn't my data already being plotted on a Cartesian coordinate system? The answer is yes. And so this is an example where you're not adding a coordinate system. What you're actually doing is replacing the default existing Cartesian coordinate system with a new Cartesian coordinate system where you've limited the y-axis to be between 80 and 100. So in effect, this is you know zooming in and looking at only those plot, uh, points that are between a systolic blood pressure of 80 and 100. And if you wanted to limit the weight, you could have also added a comma and then x lim equals and specified the bounds of the uh, x-axis that you wanted to see. So on this uh, plot on the last slide, we notice a lot of overlap in points. And in particular, if you look at the systolic blood pressure of 90 and 100, you almost see what appears to be a straight line because there's so many points that are overlapping. So if I were to ask you, where are the points more dense? at a systolic blood pressure of 90 or 100, how would you tell? When this phenomenon happens where a lot of points are overlapping, this is called overplotting. There's really three ways to handle this situation. The first way is to jitter the points. So basically shift them around just a little bit so that if two points are sitting right on top of each other, just by randomness alone, they'll start to separate a little bit and you'll get a better sense for how closely clustered they are uh, on top of each other. Another solution is to make the points smaller. So if two points are you know, close together and overlapping, by shrinking all the points, you'll physically, re physically reduce the size of the points, thereby reducing the amount of overlap they can have. And finally, you can make the points less trans or more transparent or less opaque. So by making the points more transparent, in effect, what you're doing is, you know, that in order to get a very, very dark spot, a lot of points will have to overlap in that one spot. So if you set your alpha, let's say to one over 20, what that means is that 
20 points would have to overlap in a single spot for you to see a completely black spot there. Otherwise, it'll be some shade of gray. So if we jitter the points, we get this plot right here where you can see that it becomes a little bit easier to make out uh, you know, how intense the signal is at systolic blood pressure of 90 versus 100. And it looks like there's more points um, around the systolic blood pressure of 100 just based on you know how much black I'm seeing on the screen. You can make the points smaller, which doesn't really seem to help that much here, although it might have helped if we had combined that with the uh, with the jittering of the points. Alternatively, we can make the points more transparent and less opaque. Uh, and so you can see that it looks like there's almost an entirely black line at uh, the systolic blood pressure of 100. And realize that any place along that line where it actually is completely black um, would have to be many, many, many points actually sitting in the exact same spot, essentially. So how do we generate these three different plots? Well, first, one thing we can do is store an intermediate plot to a variable, which I'm going to call SBP versus weight, which at the end of this will just contain a ggplot in it. So we'll start with the patient's data frame. We'll make a ggplot and map weight to x and systolic blood pressure to the y-axis inside of the AES function. Then we'll add a Cartesian coordinate system and specify the bounds of the y-axis, just like we did before. And then we'll stop. Notice what I haven't done. I haven't actually added a geometric object yet, but that's OK. If we were to plot SBP versus weight at this point, nothing would show up because there's no geometric object to actually plot. But with this SBP versus weight variable that contains a ggplot, now all we have to do is just add a geom point with position equals jitter. And that will give us the jittered plot that you see um, you know, in the top left of those set of three plots. If we want to shrink the points, we can do g on point size equals 1 over 20. And similarly, if we want to make the points more transparent, less, op less opaque, we can map uh, or we can assign one, or 1 over 20 to the alpha aesthetic. Notice that for both size and alpha, these are not mappings. We're actually assigning a fixed value to these. And that's why they're not inside of an AES function. Next up, we'll talk about scales. So the common times that you want to invoke a scale, one of the situations is if you want to reverse the scale. So you might remember earlier in this talk where we added scale x reverse, and that reversed the scale such that weight went from a high value down to a low value instead of the usual, which is to go from you know, the low value to the high value. Other things that you might want to do is you might not want to actually change the way the points look, but you may want to change the axis to be on a log 10 scale, such that only the factors of 10, like 1, 10, 100, and 1,000, you know, show up. And depending on the type of variable that's stored in the x-axis, sometimes that's actually a preferred approach based on what you're trying to highlight. So if you wanted to reverse the x-axis, um, on this plot on the top right, you would start with patients. You would add the ggplot with the mappings for the x and y axis. You would add geom point, and then you would just add scale underscore x underscore reverse. And take a look at the RStudio cheat sheet that you have, and you'll see that all the different options for what you can do with the scale are kind of presented there. Similarly, if you wanted a log 10 scale, you would do all the same things. And then you would just add scale underscore x underscore log 10. This is pretty rare that you'll mess with the scale. Um, but I'm just showing you that you know, should you need to customize your plot as you get closer to you know, using it for a publication or using it for something, there's a lot you can do uh, that is related to the scale that's pretty straightforward to do as long as you know that this functionality exists somewhere. Finally, let's talk about theme. 
So one thing I don't like about the default plots that are produced by ggplot in R is this gray background. I feel like this violates the whole idea of having a high data to ink ratio because that gray is not doing anything for me. And I'd much rather prefer that that gray was white where it wasn't taking up any ink. So I actually would like my plots to typically look like this second plot, which to me just looks a lot cleaner. Other times, you know, you get this plot where everything is right except the font size is too small and you want to make the font size larger to make it more readable. When you're thinking of things that are customizing the kind of look of the plot in a way that makes it more presentable, typically you're, we're talking about altering the theme. And theme is something that we can add to our plot. The theme that I most commonly use, or the theme function, is this function called theme underscore minimal. Because just by adding theme minimal to any ggplot, you go from this appearance on the top right with a gray background to a nice clean cut appearance where there's very little ink being used for the background. So it gets rid of the gray background, which I really like. There's also themes that you can use to make your plot look like the plot uh, out of a you know, specific newspaper. So if you want your plot to look like uh, you know, a Wall Street Journal plot or a New York Times plot, um, there are packages out there that help you make your plot look like the style of those plots. And many of these are actually available in the GG themes package. So just for fun, if you want to take your R plot and make it look like an Excel plot, you know, there's an option in GG themes for you that will help you out. If you want to create this, uh, this second clean plot, all you have to do is take patience, all the same things we did before with the mappings, adding of the geom bar, with the position set to dodge. We flip the coordinates, and then we just add theme minimal, and this just works. So I think it's great that all you have to do is add theme minimal, and it makes your plot look a lot cleaner. If you want to make the font bigger, this is a little bit actually more complicated. So up until the chord flip, everything is the same. But then you actually have to add theme. And then inside of theme, you have to set text to equal element text size equals 20, which will increase the size um, of the font to 20. I'll be honest and say that anytime I'm trying to make changes to either the size of the font or to the rotation of the labels uh, on either the axes, etc. I typically look this up on the web because this is not something that I keep kind of stored in my memory. So if you feel like you're never going to need to use theme, that's totally fine for the purpose of this course. But if you ever start using R and ggplot for preparing publication ready graphics, there are times where we are going to want to make these minor tweaks to make your plot look production ready. There's other aspects of plots that we didn't address today, one of which is color scheme. Color scheme isn't anything different than what we've already colored or than we've, what we already have talked about. Um, it's just a specific type of scale. So just like we were able to change the scale to be you know, a re reversed X axis scale, we can also set um, color schemes by changing, changing the color scale, uh, also using the scale functions. So we won't cover it in this course, but just realize that if you didn't like the default colors that I used, those are easily changeable um, in ggplot. 